All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory be to Yahweh. Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Racha Kodash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders, a great millstone that rule well. And blessings to the awful elect teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the flock and the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And, um,. You know, I just wanted to um, spiritually clap back at these, um, you know, these individuals here, you know, these Wi-Fi, these Wi-Fi guys, you know, as you can see, their channel is Watchmen for Israel. They caught themselves trying to reinvent the breakdown of the Mark of the Beast, which they're going totally off. Um, and, you know, like the scripture says that, you know, their conscience is seared with a hot iron. And I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to get. Um, I'm gonna get that scripture. This is um, this is First Timothy chapter four verse one. All right, it says now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, all right, which we're living in the latter times. All right, don't get it twisted. All right, we're definitely living in the latter times. Um, when you measure the time diligently, like we are commanded to do, and you see what's going on in the world. All right, throughout the earth, whether it be wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes and uproars of the people, you know, we're definitely living in these latter times because that's the things that the Lord told the disciples to watch out for. You know, in Matthew, the 24th chapter. All right. He said, look, when there shall be seen wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, pestilences, you name it. And we're pretty much experiencing that, you know, on the earth today. OK. So we're living in a lot of times, all right? No one can no one can really debate that. And if you do come up against that, then, you know, pretty much your mind is somewhere else, all right? Um, <clears throat> but the scripture says that in the latter times, that there, some shall depart from the faith, you know? And you're going to have guys that, are going to feign themselves just, man. You're going to have them guys creeping unawares. You're going to have those guys that are going to act like they're down with the doctrine, but then secretly they get offended along the way. All right? And um, the scriptures speak about offenses. Uh, <clears throat> Let me see if I can get a scripture. All right? This is Matthew chapter 18, verse 7. This is, Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs that offences come, right? But woe to that man by whom the offence cometh. So guys are going to get offended. And woe means destruction, <clears throat> by the way. All right? So offences must come, man. And guys are going to get offended. All right? Whether it's now, whether it's, you know, later on down the line, whether they first come into it and, you know, and on with joy they receive it at first light. You know, and then all of a sudden they hear something that doesn't tickle their fancy. You know, because of the way, you know, they, they held to their Western upbringing or how they see things and how things really should be according to them. You know, they, to them, it's like the hell with a doctrine. It's about what they really believe and how they feel. You know, where the scriptures speak about when you come into this thing, you got to come in as a newborn baby. You know, and these, these guys are babes, man. All right. These guys are just babes, man. All right. You can see, you know, and the apostles were saying it at the, you know, when they were doing the sit downs, you know, you know, this guy clearly has a proud look, man. You know, you don't want to be that guy, man, because, you know, the scriptures speak about in Romans 15 and 4 for whatsoever things. In fact, let's get that scripture. Let's get that scripture. OK, let's get that right here. So you would have thought guys would have read scriptures like this and just, you know, guys would have read scriptures like this. And they would have took taken comfort of the things that are written before time, and they would have kept character. But well, guess what, man? These guys, <clears throat> you know, they're showing their true character. Okay, and the spirit will do that. The spirit will reveal everything. The scriptures speak about there's nothing that hid that should not be revealed. So if a guy does get offended, then his true character is going to show over time. This is Romans chapter fifteen, verse four. It says, "For whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning." So we have to acknowledge that we learned this truth, okay? And and guess what, man? We learn it from our elders and our apostles. 
All right, the way we break the scriptures down, the way we get the precepts, and we got that from our elders and our apostles, man. All right, the way that the way that we teach, the way that we speak, you know. Now you might have, you know, you know the way a certain way that you go into, you know, how you speak and that and whatever. But you know, by and large, you know, the format that we hold when we go into the street speakings and how we do the videos, it's like we, you know, we bring the precepts, we make a point, we bring the precepts. You know, we, we pretty much filter everything through the scriptures. And that's how we've been taught to break these scriptures down. All right. And the scripture says to prove all things. And that's what we do. When we say something, we prove it in the scriptures. So these things are written for our learning. All the things that are written in the scriptures are written for before time. They were written for our learning. It says that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. <clears throat> okay. So we've got hope. All right, but you see, guys like this are hopeless. Okay, unless they repent. Okay, like if you if you remain in this, you know, in the condemnation of the <laughs> condemnation of the devil, you know, then you you are you pretty much finished, man, and you really don't even understand what you're really doing. You know, you're kicking against the pricks. Okay, the scripture said, "What did Gamaliel say? If this council be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of the Most High, you cannot overthrow it." Okay, let's happily you be found to be even fighting against the power, the most high Yahweh. Bashem Yahweh Shai. So you really ain't fighting, you know, against the apostles and the elders, all right, or even the men that learn underneath them, all right, myself being one of them. You're really fighting against the doctrine of Yahweh, okay? You're really fighting against the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And that's not somewhere that you want to be, especially in these last days, man, where all hell is about to break loose. Come on, with all these things going on, you've got pedophiles running rampant on the earth. You've got the devil, you know, uh, that's been given the, the power of the earth in his hand. And all you, all you want to talk about is, is, how, is how you got some new invention or a new breakdown of how we should go into the karagma. You guys are clearly going off. You're bugged out and you're reaching, man. All right? And just tell it like it is. The scripture says, mark them that cause divisions. All right? Next chapter over, Romans 16 and 17. Right, it says, Now I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Learned, learned, okay, which we've learned, bro. Okay, so everything that you, you know, the, the way you teach and all of that, you've learned that from somewhere. Okay, so don't try and go on like you, you know, you didn't learn it. No, you learned it, bro. Okay, but somewhere along the line, you got offended, okay, and now you guys are coming out with all of this madness, man, trying to reinvent the breakdowns of the scriptures, which I ain't even heard the whole of what you're going into, man, but what I have heard, you know, is enough, all right, and how you pulling up apostles and you disrespecting the apostles, you pulling up their clips and, you know, I've seen a couple of things of what you're saying, man, all right, and you're pretty, you're clearly, you're clearly overreaching, Okay, and you despise government. Okay, this is Second Peter chapter two and ten, but chiefly, right? But chiefly them that walk after the flesh, in the lusts of uncleanness. And you guys are lusting after the flesh because your thing is about being glorified before men. See, you're coming in that you're trying to come up some other way. And you know what the Lord said about he that cometh up some other way that they're liking unto a thief and a robber. So the Lord is likening you unto a thief and a robber because you ain't, you ain't trying to come up the right way, man. Okay? Your thing is about exalting yourself. Your thing is about, you know, um, despising government, doing things, you know, not in order and not decently. Rather, you're going the opposite way. Okay? So the Lord is going to see you guys for this, man, lest you repent. It says, despise and despise government. You despise government. Presumptuous are they. Self-willed. You're self-willed, man. Okay. Second Peter 2 and 10. Let's pull it up in the... Um, <clears throat> Second Peter 2 and 10. Let's pull it up in the blue letter. Uh, and I was thinking of a lesson to do, man. But, you know, the spirit was like, you ain't doing nothing else but speaking on this. <laughs> All right, because I was I was trying to go into some stuff, man. But the spirit was like, "Nah, I got, I got, I got to say something on this, man." It's not us, it's not me, it's the spirit. 
Okay, because you guys, man, you're being marked in the spirit, man. Okay. So I got the word for self-willed. Okay, and I'm going to play it in the Greek. <clears throat> Strong's G, 829. Althades. Althades. Right, and it says self-pleasing, self-willed, or arrogant. You guys are arrogant, man. You know, the, the bull, like the audacity. I'm not even going to say the bulls of you because you ain't really got no bulls, man. Okay. But you're arrogant, man. All right, the audacity. Arrogant. It says having or revealing uh, an exaggerated sense of one's own importance or abilities. So you guys are sitting up there like you have the ultimate scope. Okay. You're arrogant. You're self-willed. Okay, you are having or revealing an exaggerated sense of your own importance or your abilities, man. Okay, when the scriptures clearly tell you as a newborn babe, man, shut, basically, man, you got to just shut the fuck up, man. Okay, let me get that word, sincere milk, get that scripture. This is uh, 1 Peter 2 and 2, and 2. it says, and as, um, and as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. That ye may grow thereby. The sincere. So this is about sincerity, man. And the scripture says, Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Most High deceitfully. So when you try and come up some other way, guess what? You're doing the work of the Most High deceitfully. All right? No matter what you might think, you sitting down there, all right, and you got the mic all up in your hand and whatever, despite what you might think, okay, guess what? You're doing the work of the Most High deceitfully because really you're giving to your lusts. You're giving to... You know, wanting to take the leadership role in front of all of Israel, you know. You are the watchmen of Israel, like you got the ultimate breakdowns, all right. And you just the new kids on the block, and you're gonna you're gonna set the record straight. After all the years that the apostles and the elders done put in, all the laboring, all the hell that they done, they done caught, and here it is, you upstarts. You just come in here acting like you got it down packed, and ain't no one can re refute what you're saying, man. You got the, the updated version of the breakdown. But well, the Lord clearly ain't dealing with you guys, man. And you're pushing confusion. And the Lord is clearly not the author of confusion. And that's why the scripture says, back in Romans 16 and 17, Now I beseech you, therefore, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. So we avoid guys like you, man. Okay? We see what you're doing, but we avoid guys like you. All right, the sister said, can two walk together except they be agreed? We're clearly not in agreement, okay, because you're trying to do this. You, you know, you're in this for your own ulterior motives, okay? You've been, you've given heed to seducing spirits and do Let's get that scripture, okay? Um... <laughs> Well, I didn't finish it. This is back in 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So you've been seduced, man, on the left-hand side. All right? Now, if you would have understood that scripture about Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things are written aforetime time are written for our learning, you don't seem to understand that the Lord has got spirits on the left-hand side, you know, that can come down and be a lying spirit, man. So you guys are false prophets. Okay, you've been seduced. <laughs> All right, uh, seducing, planos in the Greek. What does it say? It says wandering, rovering, misleading, leading into error. You have been led into error, man. All right, it says a vagabond, tramp, imposter. Okay, and you know what happened with the story of the vagabond Jews? You know, they tried to come on, they tried to overly exert themselves. They were being arrogant. Okay, they were trying to come in that misleading spirit. They were led into error. They were arrogant. They had a they they had or revealed an exaggerated sense of their own self-importance or their abilities, man. And guess what? They got they got taken out for it. They got beaten the hell out of, man. So this ain't no joke. Okay? You are likened unto a tramp, an imposter. Okay, this is a corrupter or deceiver. That's what you are. And you know what, man? The word devil means slanderer and deceiver. And what are you niggas doing? You're slandering the apostles and you're deceiving. Okay, you're out there deceiving. You you know, you, with your updated breakdowns. Okay, your botched job breakdowns, man. But the scripture says, if the blind leadeth the blind, that they shall both fall into a ditch. 
because it's not possible. So what you're doing is in vain because it's not possible to deceive the very elect. Let's get that scripture. It is not possible to deceive the very elect, man. Okay? It's not possible. Matthew 24. All right? This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. For there shall arise false messiahs and false prophets. You guys are false prophets, man. Okay? And shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And what's going to happen to the elect? When you go to verse 31, what does the scripture say? And he shall send, who is the he? Yahweh Shai shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So the elect are written to receive salvation. No matter what you guys are coming up with, no matter how much you want to try and corrupt and deceive, the elect will not be deceived. It's not possible to deceive the elect. And I've got another one for you too, man. Right? This is John 10. All right? It says um, John 10 and, um, and 27. Right? In fact, let me start from 25. And Yahweh Shai answered them, right? I told you and you believe not. All right? You guys have been told the true doctrine. You've been told the true break breakdown. Okay. Okay. But guess what? You believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. So you guys out there that want to do your own thing, guess what? You're not of the sheep of the Lord. You're not of the this, the Lord goes on to say what? My sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. So we're going to follow Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We're going to follow Yahweh Shai. We're going to follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth, man. Okay? And I give unto them eternal life. Who's the them? Right? The elect, man. Okay? Now, ultimately, all Israel is going to be saved. But the wicked of our people, they're going to have to die on this side and come back in the kingdom through the seed of the elect. The Lord has given, uh, he said, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And you guys are just men, man. Okay, you guys are just men with your clothes on, you know, with a mic in your hand and a big mouth. That's who you are, man. You're just a, you're just a man. Okay. And you're doing, you know, you're doing the work of your father, the devil. That's why, what did it go into? Remember. Planos, it says what? A corrupter or a deceiver. What did Yahweh Shai say? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. And the word devil means a slanderer and a deceiver. So you're really falling into the condemnation of the, of the devil, man. That's what's happened to you cats. You've been offended, okay, and now you are just like, you're just out there, man, floating in deep space nine with your astronaut suit on, man. You know? You all up in that big spacesuit just blinking out there in deep space nine. Don't know what the fuck to do. You just floating, man. You know? Back in 1 Timothy 4 and 2, speaking lies in hypocrisy. Okay? Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Your conscience is seared. And that's why you can't stop speaking. You can't stop opening up that big mouth, man. Okay, because your conscience is now seared. When you go into the word seared, uh, court, uh, cauterizo, right? That's where you got the word cauterized from, I believe. Like when you cauterize a wound and you heat up that, you know, you, a soldier might heat up a sword because his fellow soldier might have been wounded on the battlefield and it needs to be cauterized. So you heat it up till it's red hot and you put that sword on it. You know, you tell him to bite down on a, on a splint or something and then you just cauterize that wound to stop the bleeding. So your conscience has been cauterized, man. <laughs> All right. It says uh, to mark by branding. And it's fitting that we're actually going into the mark of the beast as well, man. And your conscience is seared. <laughs> okay. It says to brand, to brand with, to brand with their own consciences. You're doing your own thing. And you can't even help it, man. Okay. Because guess what? Once you brand, that's why they used to, that's why Esau used to brand runaway slaves. Because once you're branded, you can't unbrand yourself. <laughs> you know? Once you're branded, you're branded, man. You got your conscience seared. 
Unless the Lord has mercy upon you, then you realize the error of your ways. He brings so much hell upon you to the point where you're like, man, I've been doing wrong. You know? And then all of a sudden, you just repent. And then, you know, because that can happen too. Hey, but the way it seems right now is that you guys, you are just full of, <coughs> you know, you just, you just full of the wrong ways, man. Coming up some other way, you know, being self-willed, despising government, speaking things which you ought not to speak. All right? It says, those who are branded with the marks of sin. <laughs> All right? And you know what the scripture says about, blessed is he in whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, man. All right? Because the scripture says, every idle word that a man shall speak, he shall give account thereof in a day of evil. Now, we all go off, man. All right? And you guys actually teach that the mark of the beast is sin. Putting your hand to wickedness and all of that. Okay? Now, where is that in the scriptures, man? Okay, because hey, John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos, we believe that what we've been taught, that, the, that John the Revelator, he actually saw people lining up and receiving, right, the MOTB, man. And they were having that thing implanted inside of them. So what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to play, I'm going to play a little bit of this botched, doc, uh, botched breakdown, right, of these guys attempting to break down Revelation 13, you know. And I'm going to go into the word mark as well, man. All right. It's nowhere in the definition. Not even close. Say he that had the mark. All right, go into that word mark. To the word. It said, we're we going to go into it. Uh. Revelation 13 and verse number 17. And just, and just, you know, just, just looking at this guy, you can see he's proud, man. You know? A novice being lifted up with pride. And I pray the Lord never puts that spirit upon me, man. I'll be honest with you. Like, to the point where you're just so proud. You know? And you got your, you know, you got your gremlins with you. To either side of you. And you just like, you know, you just, you just love being like that center stage. You, that guy, man. I pray the Lord never has that happen to me. You know? And that no man might buy or sell, mm -hmm. right? Save that. Talk it. Save he that had the mark. All right, go into that word mark. Bob see what I'm saying? Even the way he said, all right, go into that word mark. You see, where did you get that from, man? How you talk, your mannerisms, how you break in the, how you attempt to break scriptures down. Where did you get that mannerisms from? Where did you get that formula from, man? You got taught that. You got learnt. You learnt that, bro. Okay. But now here you are. You just you just backbiting, man. You just um, you lost yourself, man. You guys are just lost, man. You you've lost yourself. You've lost all, all integrity, man. You just said, fuck it. We're the new guys on the block. We're going to do things our way. <laughs> oh, man. You know, and it's really, ultimately, it's really embarrassing, man. You know, it's just embarrassing. Things are written a four time written for, for our learning. Read the story in Numbers, uh, the 16th chapter, man. All right, with Korah, Dath, and, and Abiram. All right. When you read that, and I got it right here, you read all that whole chapter you know, that's the same sort of shit that these guys are coming up with, man. They despise government. Okay, in Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, what happened to them? Hey, guess what, man? You, you had the ground open up and swallow them and their families, man. All right, and you, anyone that was with them, man, I think the scripture speaks about 14, was it 14,700? Uh, you know, lucky if I'm mistaken on the numbers. Right, that that were pretty much down with them, them guys that despised Moses and Aaron that came up against the leadership. Guess what? They got taken out, put to death. So you really don't want to mess with the leadership, bro. Oh, let me say we. We don't want to mess with the leadership. Okay, the scripture speak about every man in his own order, and you get you guys here trying to jump the queue, man. You crazy? Just sit the fuck down, man. All right. And the Greek. You gonna be able to pull it up? All right. All right. The word mark does not equate to a device. It doesn't equate to a chip. And who told you that, man? Who gave you the authorization to go and teach that? 
Because your conscience is seared with a hot iron. That's why. You're self-willed, man. And then you got your guys following, you know, you, yeah, you got your followers and that. You got subscribers, you know? All of that shit, man. You're puffed up, man. Knowledge puff of up. Don't the scripture say that? In fact, let me get that scripture too. Right? <coughs> Alright, this is... um. First uh, Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 Alright It says now as touching things offered unto idols We know that we have That we all have knowledge Knowledge puffeth up But charity edifieth And you guys are puffed up as hell man Okay Like you put some yeast in a loaf of bread And it just puffs it up You guys are puffed the fuck up Okay, and you know the scripture speak about a little leaven, leaven of the whole lump. So you guys are just full of leaven, man. You're full of yeast, you're puffed up. You right? You're in an astronaut suit, puffed up, man. Alright? You're arrogant, you're self-willed, you despise government. <laughs> I mean, come on, bro. You're just adding that in there, man. Yeah, but, but you ain't adding things. But you ain't adding things. And we, the apostles ain't added nothing, bro. You, you're the one that's adding a new break. You're coming with the new breakdown. <laughs> you're the one that's coming with new things, bro. And you know the scriptures speak about if any man addeth or taketh away from the words that are written in this book, the Lord shall add unto you the plagues that are written in the book. So you ain't even got enough fear to even believe that scripture. You ain't even got a, enough fear to believe that if you're adding or taking away from the scriptures, man, that the Lord is going to fucking jack you up. So you guys are really faithless. When you really come, when it really comes down to it, because you lack fear, you you lack for the fear of the Lord. All right, you lack the fear of the Lord, and that the fact that the Lord set up government on the earth, and He's got a, you know He's you know the, the apostles and the elders are pushing out that true doctrine. You lack the fear of the Lord to even believe that. So you taking it upon yourself to be self willed and add your own freestyle on the off the back of what the apostles have already done. Okay, so you guys, man. You better check yourself, man. Like the say, like the song, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Or the saying goes, "You're winging it." It doesn't say a chip. Doesn't say a device. Nowhere in the definition. Not even. So hold on a minute. So where does where does where does it say Babylon the Great? I mean, where does it say America for Babylon the Great in the, in the scriptures? All right, where does it say that? Where does it say America in the Bible? But America is going to be turned into a lake of fire, which is Babylon the Great, right? Like, come on, bro. Like, what the hell are you talking about? See what I'm saying about these guys, man? Get close. They say, uh, that's so They say that little wood, wood thing is supposed to uh, symbolize the, the chip. The, he's talking about the Karaks, the Palisade. All right. Which a Palisade. Let's look up the Palisade. All right. A Palisade. You see that right there? That's a Palisade. All right. Like a farmer. Like a farmer would use a Palisade for the borders of his farm, right? Like a farmer would use... um. Let me see. Like a farmer would use a palisade. <clears throat> see if I can pull up a uh, picture here. Hey, you see? You see that right there? Like a palisade. You see that how they stick into the ground? They're going to stick because they're going to have a sharp pointy end. Okay, you got the karagma. That's the chip. You got the delivery system, <clears throat> the syringe, which is going to be, you know, pushed in into your skin with force. That's what's going to happen, man. That's what John the Revelator was describing, bro. I mean, what is it you guys don't understand? But you, you ain't going to understand. Because guess what, man? <laughs> it's not given to you to understand. All right? There's a scripture on that. Let's get Matthew um, 19 and 11. All right? And the scripture says, and he, and he, said, unto, but he said unto them, All men cannot receive the saying, but save 
right? But uh, save they to whom it is given. So this this saying, these mysteries, the understanding of the scriptures has to be given to you, man. It has to be given to you, right? John three and twenty seven. Right? And John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. So it has to be given to you, man. Okay. This is madness. So here's the definition. A stat and an imprinted mark of the mark. Oh, so you, you're caught, you're caught on, on, on a, on a, on, from a jump, a stamp or an imprinted mark. Now I've got the word imprint here. Let's look at what the word imprint says. Right, it says an impre uh, impress or stamp, a mark or outline on a surface. Right, it says of a young animal come to recognize another animal, person, or thing as a parent or other object of habitual trust. It says a mark or outline made by pressing something <laughs> onto a softer substance. You are cut. You see that, man? Let me read that part again. A mark or outline made by pressing something onto a softer substance, which would be what? The syringe pressing against your flesh, all right, in order to funnel in that, that CHIP. Okay, let's look at the etymology of the word. It says, it says to mark by pressure. <laughs> Damn, bro. You guys are lost. It says to stamp in... So what was John the Revelator seeing, man? How does that... Man, come on, bro, man. How does that equate to... How does that equate to uh, uh, sin? Or putting your hand to do wicked... That don't even make no sense, bro. It says to mark by pressure, to stamp, to impress on the mind or memory, right? It says old French imprintier to stamp engrave, imprint... All right, now I got the word engrave. All right, let's look up that word engrave. You're cut, man. It says to cut in, make by incision. You guys are finished, bro. <laughs> okay, this is the word engrave right here. It says pr uh, produce or form by incision. Okay, on a hard surface, engraved. Okay. So that's the point, man. Okay, to cut in, to make by incision, and guess what? That goes into the um, which we can pull it up, man. I ain't gonna spend too long on this. All right, Revelation thirteen, Revelation thirteen, because they went into uh, let's read it, Revelation thirteen and sixteen, and he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, man. All right, that's the charagma, okay? And that no man might buy or sell. So hold on a minute, bro. It even goes on to say, and that no man might buy or sell. How can that be dealing with sin? So everywhere you go, once they institute the MOTB, someone's going to be standing at the door and asking you if you sin today. And if you ain't, then you're going to be able to buy and sell. Do you know how stupid you guys sound and look? You want to talk about adding, you're winging it. You're the ones that are winging it. You're the ones that are adding and taking away from the scriptures. You're the ones that are pushing confusion. So now how do you equate buying and selling to putting your hand to wickedness or sin? How? Or sleeping with white women like some other people teach. All these bugged out doctrines, man. You see, the Lord is going to put all these, these gums, you know, these flapping lips to rest, man. Every idle word, bro. It's a save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. All right. The mark stamped on the forehead. And they don't deal with this definition. They don't deal with the first definition. A stamp or an imprinted mark. They don't want to. I just did. They they won't deal with this. They want to. We just we, hey listen man through the spirit. I just went into the word imprint, which led to engrave. Right, which led to what? To cut, to cut in, to make by incision. What the hell are you talking about, bro? The fuck you talking about, man? You Johnny come lately, but you got the answers, man. Shut the hell up, bro. Okay. 
Let's look up a syringe. All right, what, what, what's this, bro? What's this? What's this, man? What's this, man? All right, and these are the kind of devices that they're going to use. All right, and they're going to make that cutting in your flesh, that incision, man. And people are going to be lining up, just like they had them line up to take the Vaseline, man. All right, because Esau's going to, you know, deceive those to pretty much take the MOTB. All right, and that was just nothing but a trial run, man. Yeah, okay, because Esau's going to come hot and heavy with this. That's why the scripture says the devil will come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he has but a short time. So when that time comes, what are you guys going to do, man? Let's see what you're going to do. When you're when you're forced to line up and you got to make a choice. All right, you got to make a choice, man. Is it what the apostles were teaching? Did they have it right? Or is it what, you know, or was it what I was saying? <laughs> you know, everyone's going to have to make that choice, man. Revelation 3 and 10. The hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth, man. <laughs> okay. So anyway, man, with that, man, I pray you were edified with this lesson. I didn't want to stay too long on this, man. I just wanted to, hey, the spirit, I, I was, like I said, I was looking for a topic to do, man. But then the spirit was like, you got to just, we got to mark them that cause divisions, man. And offenses contrary to the doctrine, right? That's scriptural. So it is what it is. To so the next time I say Shalom.